You're watching Twin Tears Sunday with Leanne DeRosa. Welcome to Twin Tears Sunday. I'm your host, Leanne DeRosa. This area is full of gems, and in today's episode, we are gonna go hunting for some of those gems, both big in nature and also small in glass. So get ready, because today we're gonna lose our marbles. Literally, let's go. We're going on a marble scavenger hunt. But first, let me explain, and let's meet the men behind the marbles. So as you know, glass is very prominent in this area, but today we're focusing on a specific medium, marbles. And I'm joined now with two glass artists who specialize in making marbles, Aaron and Miles. Thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you. Thank so uh, we're here at the Corning Museum of Glass and you have a ton of your marbles on display. Um, but we're talking about how the community has gotten involved with your art and that's through a scavenger hunt. It all starts from a Facebook page. You can participate, anyone from home. So first, um, Miles, tell me what is this Facebook group and how does it work? Tell me what the name of it is. Well, it's called Gorge Glass of the Finger Lakes. Uh, it's very simple. You become a member and you view the posts. Um, and if you see a, a posting of a, a lost marble uh, in an area that you might know or have interest in, in seeing, uh, then you can go and, and hunt for it. Um, it's, it's as simple as uh, finding one of the artists in the group to obtain one of their marbles from. Um, and then going out and hiding it in one of your favorite locations, uh, taking a couple of, of brief pictures as clues uh, that will then be posted in the group for the members to view. And they leave it up to you guys often to do the hiding or the losing as you've been calling it. But first, um, when did this Facebook group get started and how did it get started? Well, from, our, from the, the Ithaca Marble Artists, uh, I think I was the first one to, to come on board with the, the Facebook scene of marbles. Um, and I had found a, a marble auctioning group. Um, and one of the customers who had won one of my auctions uh, happened to live in San Antonio. And I had a friend from Oregon who now lives in San Antonio. And I just offhand made the comment, oh, San Antonio, my buddy lives there. Um, and she mentioned uh, this, this group in San Antonio, Esferas Perdidas, uh, basically the same idea, the hunting and hiding group. Um, and I, I saw the amazing fun they were having, uh, the family fun, you know, people of all ages getting engaged in this, this scavenger hunt for the handmade art and figured you know, Ithaca and the Finger Lakes surrounding area is just ripe with uh, places to, to lose your marbles. Um, and, you know, what, what better thing to start in Ithaca or the area around uh, than, than an activity like that? So to engage the general public that, that maybe aren't as aware of the, the art, uh, the medium, um, and also to encourage people to explore new areas around the, the region. So get involved with the outdoors and stuff. And we'll right. get more into you know the scavenger hunt. Um, what kind of people have you met? Stories have you heard? Responses have you gotten from the people who get involved with the hunting? Oh, every every range of age. I mean, there's it's not specific to anybody. Um, some of the best stories I hear are. Well, for instance, yesterday at the Johnson Museum, we lost marbles in sub-zero weather with 20 mile an hour winds. And this was during a big art event at the museum. And this, this woman and her son came to me and said, you know, I just wanted to thank you because my son wouldn't have come to this if we didn't have the chance to at least look for this marble. And they didn't even find it. But the, the little guy was so excited about that possibility that he went out and experienced this whole new world of art that he wouldn't have done without that, that little incentive. Um, and to me, that's, that's one of the best things of the group, the, the engagement of all ages, children, families, um, you know, not just 
to find the art, that's of course wonderful, but to, to get them engaged and having fun together, doing things that they might not otherwise do. And how about you, what is it that you love about the group and the participation? Very much the same thing. I think um, we're caught in a, a day and age of um, computers and video games and have forgotten nature and connections and and like Miles said it, it, it gives you an opportunity to do something with your children that's interactive um, you're out in nature um, you know where you're not you know isolated or you know dialed into you know a machine so it's like and on top of it you get to find art so it's like it's a really really win-win situation for all of us involved look through the posts and you see the the pictures of found and you'll see some of the biggest smiles you've ever seen in those pictures and that that right there is worth more than selling that piece to me for sure now the people keep the marbles but they also can rehide them or relose them yep. okay and we will get into some of the details about the scavenger hunt and the losing and the finding and how you can participate uh, but one thing i wanted to ask you guys is why marbles uh this the Simplistic complexity, it's, it's such a, a, a basic form, yet the possibilities of what can be placed inside that form are literally endless. Um, it's, it's only limited by your imagination and your, uh, I guess, your tenacity with the repeated attempts and failures. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, trial and error going into it. so. Um, there's always that challenge of, of what else can I put into this this little round ball, this sphere? Because a sphere, okay, I've done that, so now what else is next inside it? Um, I find that to be a, a, an intriguing challenge and one that keeps me uh, interested and you know actively uh, wanting to pursue the, the art. Uh, I would say, I think the first thing that came to my mind is most people can identify with marbles. Like everyone, when you say marbles, they're like, oh, I played with marbles when I was, you know, it's the childhood. first thing you hear is it, it invokes something in their childhood. So I think, I think that the fact that everyone can identify with the medium or the art form is really, really what makes marbles so special. And then the fact that these are more collector's marbles, it brings a whole new um, facet to it. It's like these aren't playing marbles. People are intrigued that people actually pay to collect these things, you know? So it's like Miles said, the complex simplicity of it is really what's really interesting and, and it's a it's a, just an amazing form for me. I mean, I've blown glass since I was, since 98, and marble for me have been the most challenging form of getting a round sphere. I'm sure it doesn't look easy, let me tell you. So before we tell you how you can join in on the scavenger hunt fun, let's show you how these beauties are made. Take a look. All right, now I'm here with Miles, and he's gonna show us how you make a marble. So, safety goggles on, take it away. Indeed. Well, for this technique, the, the marble I call a chaos swirl. I start with a, oh, a half inch rod, about a little less than two feet long. And I pick two colors, two contrasting colors, uh, typically one being a sparkle color and the other being a striking color. The striking color will achieve a, a range of tones and shades and colors, uh, helping me achieve more out of, uh, out of less. So what colors did you pick? Uh, for this one, I've chosen silver unobtainium and blue moon. And I put a line of each down on one side of the rod, uh, heat it up, fold it over, and now I'm going to melt them together and twist them. A lot of the marble making is all about the timing. Um, you know, keeping the heat in the piece, 
Having enough, not too much. And if you can see the little twist I've got started. Fairly nice piece in itself, but I like to take this and introduce the element of chaos. That's sort of how I came about this. Uh, I was making one of these and it went off axis and instead of throwing it out, I just looped it together and went with the chaos. So once I get the majority of it nice and round and smooth, I give it a little polish. I do a lot of checking the roundness and smoothness in the, the line of light provided by my fluorescent light above by looking at the, the reflection of that light I can see if there's a, a lump or a bump or a variation in the roundness. So now letting it cool enough so I can grab it with these tongs I've created. Uh, if I were to grab it now it would be a little too soft and I could squish it. But it cools fairly quickly. And if this was done right, it should do that. And break off nice and clean. Yay. And once it's all done, it gets popped in the furnace to sit for a few hours. And then we have a beautiful new work of art. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, it's time to lose those marbles. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's time now for our marble scavenger hunt. I set out and joined Miles and his son Walter on one of their typical afternoon walks, a prime time to lose some marbles out in nature. I try to put them in locations that uh, are, you know, a, a beautiful area um, that people might not get to usually. Um, that's kind of the idea of the, the gorge portion of the gorge glass. Our first stop, the Mundy Stone Loop up near the Cornell Plantations, one of Miles and Walter's favorite and frequent areas to explore. Okay, you gonna push it? Every time I walk the trail, I see a, a different spot that would be perfect for a, a lost marble. And it's pretty cool like that. And you see, you see the areas in a different way when you're thinking of, uh, you know, a, a lost marble. Well, it can be as simple as placing them uh, in plain sight uh, along a trail that somebody might be traveling on, uh, or placing them very, very deeply hidden. Um, it's really up to the, the person losing the marble to decide uh, how much they want to make the people work for it. They can be very cryptic. Um, I've seen people post a clue of a, a dropped pin in the middle of the state. Um, you know, and sometimes you'll see a picture of the marble itself in the spot that it's hiding. Uh, so it could be very easy, it could be very hard. Um, you, never, you never really know. After a quick trek through the snow, we reached the perfect hiding spot. Ooh, Walty, this is your little gnome tree, isn't it? Hmm. Climb on in, let's take a picture. I think we'll put it here. You'll typically take a picture of the marble uh, and then some general location picture clues. I like to have Walty hold these when I lose them, you know, for those pictures. But with the mittens on, it's kind of hard, so. So, let's see, I want it to be hidden enough. There we go. Tucked it up in there. So if you look for it, you'll see it. But if you're just walking by, you probably won't. Then, you have to post to the Facebook group. Now I go to Gorge Glass, and then I, you know, simple as posting, just lost. Uh, something that can then be edited when somebody posts that they find it, uh, to say found. 
so that other members don't go looking for something that's already been been found. All right. Simple as that. Pretty easy. But we also changed things up a bit and picked a new hiding spot, somewhere that knows glass all too well, the Corning Museum of Glass. Well, it seems some hunters tend to catch on to people's styles of hunting and hiding. Um, so there are a few people that have learned my style, and I have recently been making efforts to uh, change it a little bit, but, but keep it, you know, keep it interesting and keep it consistent. and. Uh, and hopefully keep it so that people can be successful in finding them um, with, with a little bit of work, of course. Easy as that. Tuck it away, post a picture. <laughs> yeah, let's see, where's the next one going? So I'm pretty much just taking a reference shot, including the marble, a little bit. And it's that simple. And then I'll lose it. Go tuck it into the rocks. And winter makes it hard with the snow. Uh, footprints. Follow the already made footprints. I just noticed a dark rock out of the the field of rocks in general. It caught my eye, so I figure it might catch somebody else's. <laughs> if they investigate hard enough, then uh, there they go. So there's some real digging you have to do here. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, maybe move a rock. But you gotta know which rock. Sure. <laughs> That's one thing we try to avoid is any disruption of landscaping or, uh, you know, uh, damaging any any property um, you know one of the, the the biggest rules is to follow the rules of any area that you're in um, say if we hide in a, a state park um, typically the hides will be right on the trail uh, because you're not allowed to go off the trails um, so it, it that can be one of the challenges as well um, finding a, a discreet enough spot um, that's literally traveled by hundreds and hundreds of people uh, so there are a lot of things to consider when hiding um, things like that but uh, other than that it's very very easy and lots of fun and now that the marbles are all in place it's time to sit back and let the hunting begin in less than an hour we happen to catch a bird's eye view of one successful hunter once a marble is found, the person must edit the Facebook status so everyone in the group knows it's no longer up for grabs. Then it's up to them, either keep the work of art or hide it again and keep the fun going for the rest of the hunters out there. It's a lot of fun. It gives me a, a little bit of a purpose to get out on my walks. I like to go for walks. So it's sort of like an Easter egg hunt for grown-ups. <laughs> I like that. The Gorge Glass of the Finger Lakes group has been getting people out and about for two years now, and some people have become loyal hunters, like the Davidson family. All right, we gotta figure out where the library is, but I think it's over that way. But this set of clues led them to the Marble Hunter's Kryptonite, as the artists like to say, rocks. What's your best advice for searching through rocks? Do you have to pick up every single one of them? No, just look up, like pick up the big one. Or like out place ones. We got a lot of rocks to dig through. <laughs> it could be anywhere along here. <laughs> I would think it would be against the wall. You kind of, you be the photographer sort of with the picture. You look at what angle it's from and try to see if they post multiple pictures. Um, any similarities in each picture, like if you see the same tree in each picture, chances are it's right around that tree. And then you have some that are completely random and sort of a pain, but <laughs> it's fun. Places that, stuff that doesn't belong there and looks different, like take and then put back, like Any, stuff. Anything that's out of place, you know, little hiding spots. You gotta, Under leaves. Yep, mm -hmm. uh, looking at the hints that he posts on the site, you have to look for specific little things in the pictures. Oh, that was a good spot. 
But after 10 minutes of searching in the cold, the Davidsons had no luck. So what happened? You looked around? Yes. Yeah. And saw nothing. Didn't find anything yet, but. We're gonna go look for another one and then come back and look again. Because sometimes fresh eyes help the situation. <laughs> yep. But that might have just been what they needed. Oh, I found it. Because they found a few oh, in other it? spots yep. right after that. For them, it's all part of the fun. Oh. We have a winner. Some we keep, uh, and then others we do rehide. You know, we try to keep, uh, since we're, we do live down here in the Corning area, we try to keep it going, you know, more for the Corning people, you know, that like to, to join. You know, we try to, we're trying to get more and more down in this area to, to, to be involved. Um, you know, we do it here in Corning. We like to do it up in the Watkins Gorge. You know, that's another place that a lot of a lot of hides happen. You know, once the weather breaks, uh, Spencer Crest, you know, that's another place that we hide. You know, we're just trying to expand it more and more out into this area. And expanding the reach of this Facebook page and getting more people involved with the art and the scavenger hunt is one of Miles' big goals. And after the break, we have suggestions for how you can get involved, so stay tuned. So you've seen how the marbles are made, hidden, and found, and now it's time for you to get involved. So Miles, how can people out there get involved with the scavenger hunt? Well, it's as simple as joining the Facebook group Gorge Glass of the Finger Lakes, uh, looking at some of the picture clues, and trying your hand at hunting. Awesome. And now you can also get hands-on, too. You teach classes, is that right? Yes. I have a couple coming up at the studio at the Corning Museum of Glass. Um, and there should be some in the near future at other studios around as well. Okay, great. And uh, as always, you want to encourage people not to get involved with just the scavenger hunt, but even artists as well? Oh, indeed. Definitely would love to encourage other glass artists to get out there and hide their marbles. Uh, it doesn't need to be a first quality piece of artwork, just whatever anybody will enjoy. Uh, it's It's been amazingly beneficial for me, and it could be for you too. Awesome. All right, thank you, Miles. That about wraps up today's episode of Twin Tears Sunday. Thanks so much for joining us, and go get out there. Happy hunting. We'll see you next time.